I really don't know how I feel about this happy feeling. This is one of the very last Debbie Reynolds films that I had to watch and I ended up having to buy the DVD. It took ages to get here and I kind of hope that it would have been worth the effort. Honestly, yes, I loved seeing her in this, but with regards to the film itself, it was mediocre. It was watchable, but the narrative was really lacking. It was definitely driven by character rather than narrative. But the characters weren't particularly that interesting anyway. This was released in 1958, directed by Blake Edwards, based on the play For Love or Money by F. Hugh Herbert. I haven't heard of the play or obviously seen it. If you have, please feel free to let me know how it differs or if you prefer the film or the play. I'd be interested to learn more about that. And Dead Reynolds plays a, a young woman called Janet. And she's at a party one night and... She's basically just been fired and she she storms out and is planning on going home and this seeming gentleman offers her a lift to the station and when he suggests that he takes her all the way home, she gets out of the car, falls down a mud bank into a river and things just seem to go bad from worse. And then she ends up knocking on the door of a doctor's house, a random house she chooses to ask for help. And it's it's an older man, um, obviously an older man inviting a young woman into his house is not necessarily not creepy, but she's desperate. She goes in and one thing leads to another, she ends up staying a lot longer and all of a sudden feelings and emotions are all over the place and I won't say any more than that because... There isn't much more to say, to be perfectly honest. That is it. Over the course of however many days or weeks that follow, I'm not actually 100% sure how long it lasted. It's all about her staying there, the role she takes on there, what she feels, how her emotions adapt, and how um, Mitch, Preston Mitchell, played by Kurt Jungens, um, and how he feels as well. And I will say his character was surprising. He was very different to what I expected. He wasn't... He didn't behave the way I expected. And I'm not going to say any more than that. I don't want to spoil it. But it was quite refreshing with this particular character. I was fascinated by him. Janet, unfortunately, wasn't that interesting. Yes, I loved watching Debbie Reynolds. Yes, she sang in this a little bit. And beautifully so. And she had some gorgeous costumes, but the character unfortunately just wasn't that fascinating. So I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't emotionally invested in her journey. I wasn't that bothered about what happened to her, which sounds awful. But right from the off, I just never found her that interesting. And because there isn't really a narrative to this, and it is more about this character and what she goes through and her changing feelings... It kind of meant there wasn't very much going for it. It was relatively well shot. There was a lovely piece involving um, show jumping and some beautiful horses and quite nice to look at. And there's a beautiful, <laughs> genuinely funny moment. Um, I won't say what happened, but it's when they're watching the show jumping and, J and Debbie, uh, Janet, turns around to smile to another woman. And it's what that other woman does. And I won't say more than that, but I, for the only time in the film, I genuinely laughed out loud at it and found it to be quite entertaining. Also, the seagull. I don't understand the seagull at all, um, but that was certainly uh, curious. Mrs. Early, uh, particularly an interesting character, played by Estelle Winwood. Um, Generally, there was nothing wrong with it. Specifically, I just found like it was lacking in something. Whether that was a better character, you know, in whose journey I could become emotionally invested. Or maybe something in the narrative that would throw a spanner in the works here and there to keep me on my toes. I don't know. It wasn't great. I'm glad it's not the last Debbie Reynolds film I have to see. I think there are four, four more that I have to see. Um, one of which I need to buy on Amazon Prime, uh, or not Prime, but Amazon Video, one of which I've bought the DVD and it's coming from America and it's taken forever. So there's still hope for me to end on a high, but there, there's a reason why these ones are quite hard to get hold of, because they're not that popular. This Happy Feeling is worth a watch if there's anybody in the cast that is pulling you towards it, or if you've seen the play and would like to see how it's adapted, because 
even though I didn't really enjoy the film, I would be quite curious to see the play. To see what it's like. Specifically if there was some DNA who I was interested in. Maybe. We'll see. But this happy feeling is one that I'd recommend only if you like the cast or if you've seen the play. Otherwise, I wouldn't really bother. <laughs>